Hey guys, welcome back. In this series, I'm going to teach you all how to build walking machines. These lessons will be broken down into the following topics, and I will also be constructing two different walkers as we go along to try and give you some concrete examples to follow. This video will be very compatible with my How to Make a Mech World, as most of the information I covered there will remain the same. However, some key differences are that I've made the timer sequence smaller and easier to understand. And I will also be providing many more examples to back up what was said on the text panels in there. With that said, let's get started. Now the first and most important step is figuring out what you want to make. You might have an idea already in your head that you want to create from scratch, or maybe you'd like to be inspired by something that's already out there. For me, the design process is fairly simple. I'll hop on over to Google Image Search and go down the rabbit hole until I find something interesting enough to dedicate my time to. This has worked out very well up until this point, as there's no shortage of cool designs waiting to be recreated. I've noticed that adding a few choice keywords always gives me the best result. Also, if you want to break the shapes into something a little more palatable for space engineers, try searching for a LEGO version of your ideas. Something to keep in mind is that the number of legs your walker has is going to determine how hard you have to work to balance it. Anything with six legs or more is going to be inherently stable because it always has three points of contact with the ground. Quadrupeds are fairly stable as well, but usually need some gyro pitch override to keep them level as they move. Bipeds are gonna be the most challenging because you have to take into account leg stance, balance, and foot design in order to keep them from falling over. The last thing you have to take note of is how the legs are going to move. The vast majority of all walkers are going to use either sweeping or inline motion to take a step. Sweeping legs will arc around the body and give more of a spidery look. They're slower, but they have great mechanical turning ability. Inline stays parallel to the direction of travel only moving the legs back and forth. It's faster in a straight line, but usually needs a gyro to steer. All bipeds will use inline motion, while anything with four or more legs can use sweeping, inline, or a combination of both. For this video, I've chosen these two concepts as my example builds. On the left is a quadruped with two joints in the legs and uses sweeping motion. On the right is a biped with four joints in the legs and uses inline motion. I also want to point out some things that will need to be changed right off the bat. On the quadruped, I want to make this area longer to give it a better step. And on the biped, I know the foot will need to be bigger than this in order to balance right. Once you've got a good idea together, it's time to start building. We're going to begin by just focusing on the body. I like to start with the cockpit or some key feature you want to include and work outwards from there. Here are the required blocks you will need to find space for. A bare minimum of four timers for the walk cycle. I recommend more if you want to use more functions or use the precise timer script. A power source for obvious reasons. A minimum of two gyros for stability and steering. The size of your walker will determine if you need more and a control block, like a seat, remote control, or cockpit. Now optional but highly recommended blocks are programmable block for precise timers or another useful script, and one thruster for helping with hills and inclines. Keep these in mind as you begin forming the initial shape. You should be searching for dead space or regular armor blocks that you can replace with these required ones. A great starting place is around the cockpit. 
I'm going to keep building out the shape using my picture as reference, picking out details where I can. Glass doors will always come in handy for adding more greebles. I put some piston caps where my rotors will go to remind myself not to build there. If I run out of room for essential blocks inside the body, a nice backup plan is to move to the underbelly where I can cover them with panels. Now, let's talk about placing gyros. It's important to keep them organized. Some should be designated for stability and pitch correction, and some for steering. The stability gyros are the ones where I'm going to just check the override option and leave them alone. This causes them to resist any change to the orientation of the grid they're attached to and acts like artificial balance. They will also turn blue. I'll put these in a group called stability. Pitch correction gyros will have override checked and also have some value set on the slider. If you orient the gyro like this with the glowing circles going straight up and down with the body, then you will use the pitch slider. If you put it in a different orientation, then you'll have to figure out if it's roll or yaw that gives the desired effect. I'm not going to set it now because I don't want it to continually spin while I'm building, but I know it's ready to go for the future. I put these kind of gyros in a group called tilt. If your build is small, like this quadruped, you may not need any stability gyros, since the tilt gyro will provide enough stability on its own. Steering gyros will not have any override checked, and can be placed any way you like. They will remain green. If you make something that has a moving upper torso, ensure your stability and tilt gyros are placed underneath the rotor where the legs attach, otherwise they won't function properly. I was happy with the quad at this point, so let's move on to the biped. Once again starting with the cockpit and building out. I knew the key feature for this one would be the opening on the front with the glowing red bar. I plan to fill that in with a projector later on. I was able to fit my essential blocks all on the inside. I opted to not do a rotating torso for simplicity's sake. After hammering out the initial shape, I took another pass to add specific details and some better angling on some of the hard edges. And there we go with step 2 complete. I'll take care of painting once we are down on the planet because the colors tend to look different in space. So now it's time to get busy with the legs. Start building the legs where they attach to the body using either rotors or hinges. Rotors provide more freedom of movement, but hinges are simpler and can be stacked for more torque. As you place the joints, you can save some headaches by keeping track of where the zero is on the rotor and the two marks on the hinge. These let you know which direction is positive and negative for their movement. Keeping them in the same direction on each leg will make it easier as you adjust the angles later on. Name your joints in a convention that makes sense to you as you build them.
As you place your rotors and hinges, give them some braking torque and then turn them off. This will ensure that they don't move around by accident when you build. We'll talk more about this during the next step. Ensure there is enough clearance for them to move freely. You can use half blocks and blast doors to make larger gaps. Blast door corners will give the most amount of clearance because the two edge parts have a shorter collision mesh than standard blocks. Half blocks are also great for building some shape into the legs without adding too much bulk or weight. You want to utilize symmetry and copy and paste as much as possible to cut down on workload. For the quad, all I had to do was change the hinge name and then I could paste on the next three legs. To finish off the look, I added a few panels over the rotors. I started off the biped with rotors for the hips and made sure to give them max displacement to clear the blocks around them. For the rest of the joints, I will be using double hinges. You can set this up by placing two hinges next to each other, making sure the two marks face the same way. Give them names and then delete one of the heads. Add some blocks to cross the gap and then put a new hinge head on the block you just placed. Now you can attach that hinge and make them all connect together. It's always good to add some side support blocks to the feet to keep them more upright. Once again, I took another pass on the legs to add some extra detail. For greebling, my go-to is to try and find spots where I can replace standard blocks with things like blast doors, beacons, and air vents. For the second leg on the biped, I was able to copy the first one and just switch the details so they were mirrored on the other side. I also changed the names of all the joints. If your build has complex leg shapes that are hard to copy, you can spare yourself from having to manually build each side by using symmetry in a kind of unusual way. Place your starting block on the joint, and then draw a line of blocks out from it so you're not blocking your view. Find the midpoint so it lines up with your first block and then build that part as normal. When you're done, you can turn around and find a mirrored version that is already completed. You will have to repeat this for each subgrid, but it takes a lot less time than building each twice. Now that our legs are built, let's talk about some more foot options we can use. For light mechs, you can just put a layer of heavy armor at the bottom of the foot. Sprinkling in some tires doesn't hurt as well. Alternatively, you can go with a wheel suspension pointed at the ground if you're okay with that aesthetic. This will absorb damage and also give more friction, but be careful not to place the value too high or it will trip up your legs. If you don't want to use wheel suspension, but you find that your feet keep breaking, there is another option you can do. And this is to just make your foot invincible. So a long time ago, a friend gave me a blueprint for an indestructible block that could be used in worlds with destruction turned on. Anything you pasted onto this block would also become indestructible. So I tried pasting the foot of one of my mechs onto the block, and I noticed that while the foot was made indestructible, everything that wasn't part of the foot subgrid could still take damage. This meant that I would never again have to worry about broken feet from just basic walking, but my mechs could still be destroyed just as easily. 
while this is a little bit of a hack I don't really feel too bad about using it because the armor in this game is as strong as cheese and I prefer the ability to create feet that look like they belong on the walker without worrying about causing damage on each step. So if you want to go this route, here's what you can do. I will have a link in the description to my monitor quadruped that uses this trick. Paste that into your world and detach one of the feet. Cut away all the blocks except for the center one and then shoot it a few times to make sure it's still invincible. You can then blueprint this block, and anything you paste onto it will assume its properties. After that, you can kiss your foot breaking problems goodbye. With the construction out of the way, we can shift gears to creating some nice walking motion. And it all starts with leg positioning in episode 2. I'll see you over there.